Hello, welcome back to Bitcoin Beats. Wait for the drop. You made a monster. Hope you're all having a fantastic day here. I thought I would up the drop today because yesterday was a little bit anticlimactic, but we're not here to, to listen to drops, okay? We're here for some technical analysis. We're here to make money at the end of the day, right? I'm a professional trader, okay? We're going to be going through the short term for Bitcoin, the mid term for old Bitcoin here, the long term for Bitcoin. And my weekly round of blue boxes analysis as well. Just uh, basically what we can expect here with the most recent price action and how we can go forward doing this, right? Uh, before we begin, I do just want to say uh, in terms of uh, a percentage from where the day has started, Bitcoin is a lot down compared to other assets. Uh, let me know if this is something that interests you. You can just see the percentage moves of each asset from the start of the day with that little seven in the corner, right? So uh, we're, we're, at, we're down like 3% today. Which, uh, which is interesting when you compare it to other assets and you can see all this in the chart. So let me know in the comments if, if this is useful for you and I'll, I'll keep bringing it up every video because I do think it's useful uh, to see what Bitcoin's doing compared to all these other important assets uh, in the world markets, right? So without further ado, what's happened here with old Bitcoin here? Uh, it does look like we are in the midst of a breakdown towards the ground here. Big, girthy, megalodonithic dumps here. Girthy, and uh, yeah, it's looking pretty pretty good for this measure move to to kind of bring us down, right? But I would say, guys, just to be careful here, because again, we are in a, a longer term uptrend, and shorting is not a good idea in uh, in those kind of areas, right? It's the number one rule of trading: do not short an uptrend, do not long a downtrend, because you will get obliterated by the whales here. So that's what we're we're trying to avoid. But in terms of uh, actually predictions here and what I expect to happen with old Bitcoin. Um, we did draw in this trap zone here, uh, which was which had some confluence, I guess, but it's looking like we might break through here. It really depends how this candle ends. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it looks rough. It does look like we can continue to the downside, but uh, if we are on the short term and we are analyzing the data here of what we can see in front of our faces as of right now, uh, let's take a look at the order books on Bookmap, right? Our heat map showing us potential supports and resistances based on the amount of Bitcoins uh, in, in orders on these books on the exchanges, right? So this is on the Binance exchange. Uh, obviously, we have 350 Bitcoin chilling at 8,500 as a support here. If, if they take that off, obviously, guys, uh, that then that's not going to be there anymore, <laughs> right? These are these are orders. They're not actual trades yet. Okay, so uh, you can see here it's pretty fairly even. I would say to both sides. I, I would say as well though that the the upper side here, this this 19 to 20k zone, has been chewed up a little bit over this past week. There was a lot more here, I would say, and now there is a lot less Bitcoin here uh, compared to what I've seen uh, before the weekend, right? So, uh, yes, we have been testing up. Yes, we have been annihilating some of this wall, but as of right now, it is still a stalemate between these guys. And I would just say, essentially, uh, the, the big big orders will win here um, that can just smash through this. So again, we are just still messing around here in this sideways area. And it's again, time to be cautious until we basically, and this is the best way to kind of show this off, right? Uh, basically, if we get above this big order book and we smash through all of this, yes, expect a pullback, but um, it would mean that there's no more sell orders at this point. And uh, at that point, it's more likely that we go up. And equally towards the downside, if we smash through all these guys here, right? So everyone with these Bitcoins at the top, uh, which you can't even see my mouse, which kind of sucks. Can you see that now? Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, these orders at the top, if they were just to say, hey, we've got all these Bitcoin, let's market sell them right now. Obviously this wall down here is not gonna hold, right? And then we're gonna bang it all the way down here, but uh, expect a big bounce as well, right? So that's, um, that's kind of what we're seeing there. In terms of measure moves and in terms of what I think will happen in terms of the pattern, 
right? Uh, we had these trap zones drawn in. We respected this top side trap zone. I said, guys, and if you did get in along here, uh, you should have watched my video yesterday, to be honest, guys, because I said, uh, as, until we get over this trap zone, guys, until we get over this trap zone, uh, I don't expect this to play out towards the upside. So we had a couple false breakouts here. Well, uh, three false breakouts here uh, in which a lot of people would have longed and got absolutely destroyed by these whales here. But us as cautious, profitable traders that are chilling on our, on the way to our, our beautiful 50-man Lambo race for the community here. Um, yeah, we're not going to be taking these trades because it's it's not a good trade to take, right? Until we get over this, until we confirm this as, as, as support, uh, and then we can look for that measure move up to the 20,000s, right? Uh, as of right now, it does look bearish. I'm not going to lie to you guys. We've lost the 200, uh, which is quite rare to do. We've only lost it on, on the last dump here, and we never lost it uh, before that point throughout this entire run up, as you can see, right? Only a couple traps below. So, whether we're in a trap below right now, uh, and, and we are just going to completely recover from this, is still up for debate. We are close close enough to trap here still um, this this trap zone isn't set in stone as you can see there aren't actually any other correlative points besides this wick so um, we could we could draw this again depending on how uh, how this shapes up right so again don't be just rushing into any positions again I'm not looking to short this I'm looking to, to find a bounce here wherever we land and if this FUD does kick in and we get some seriously girthy dumps here towards the downside uh, then potentially a long down in these lower areas could make sense as well if we bring it out a little bit, if we widen the scope, make a little bit of a bigger picture here, then what can we see? We can see uh, a nice little, uh, a nice little, well, I wouldn't call this little, actually. I would actually call this um, girthy, <laughs> a, girth, a girthy channel here coming through. And the measurements for that channel here are all the way up to uh, 23,000. And actually, this would be up a bit higher now based on where price action is. So if we were to just smash it towards the upside, 23. 1500 but it does look a lot more bearish right now uh, and uh, we are on the pinnacle of just breaking this right now okay so if we do break this down obviously I'm not looking to trade this towards the downside but I would expect this measure move to play out uh, even if it is a wick down to 18,000 and just be caught on this zone right so what I'm looking for here uh, and we'll see in the, the higher time frames in a minute is basically a bounce either on this ATR band uh, for a trade up as well as looking for this to, to hold as support as you can see here right uh, so if this holds a support here and we do mess around this ATR band and then reclaim it uh, and have a confirmed bottom at this area then yeah I'm going to be looking for a long essentially just uh, just back up to, to wherever we may land okay hopefully up to the 200 EMAs when those are around this kind of 18.9 area so potential for a nice trade here towards the upside if this plays out nicely we're looking at like six or seven percent uh, on that range which is good okay we're in an uptrend we're looking for longs uh, so if we do get some downwards here then uh then we can look for longs around this area here but uh if we lose this this support here and this is super important to be not biased okay uh, we're not blindly putting in orders here like some people will do okay we are waiting to see if that momentum turns around we're waiting to see if it's healthy and then if it is with our cautious clear mindset here we can get in a trade make money and, uh, and not really worry too much, okay? So, um, if we do lose this support and the momentum doesn't turn around here, and what I'm looking for here is essentially, uh, the ideal scenario is if we don't reclaim this ATR band and we do start this kind of uh, resistance line on it and then we'd start to lose this and then potentially a retest of that would be good. Then, continuation down to maybe 14 or 15K here is not out of the question at all, okay? It's really, really not, okay? So... Uh, that's kind of what we're looking at there. Just to kind of clarify what I'm looking for is basically a break of 17.5, but a consistent one. Not just we're trading below 17.5, we've been there for 10 minutes. No, I'm looking for like a potential a couple hours or so below this area, retesting it, uh, and then coming down to complete this measure move. But again, I'm not taking a trade here, but that's what I'm looking for if it was to continue down there, okay? Uh, what I'm looking for is long. So I'm looking for a long here, okay? Or I'm looking for a long here, essentially. That's, that's it. Uh, that's that's my goal here. That's that's the the best scenario here where I can see a bounce happening. And if it doesn't happen here, guys, um, and if we don't come down, uh, and it, well, I mean, 
if we don't come down, we're probably going up, to be fair, guys. Uh, but uh, if we do come down here, it does not necessarily mean that we're going to get a bounce here, okay? I'm looking for a bounce here, I'm looking for a bounce here, but it doesn't necessarily mean we're getting one. We can also have a seriously girthy crash here, and a uh, shout out to Kyle, the Moon Kyle. Okay, dudes, uh, I, uh, I have been talking about these affiliate people for some time and, and giving them a bad name, but the Moon Kyle has actually been fairly unbiased recently, and uh, he seems like a pretty good dude. I've been talking to him, uh, and uh, to be honest, guys, yeah, I mean, he's saying that we can potentially dump to 8k, which is, uh, I've never heard him say that before, which is quite interesting, right? Um, and I know you guys are probably thinking, like, uh, you don't like these channels, what's going on? Have you turned to the dark side or anything like that? Guys, I don't have a gripe or anything against these channels. I don't like the business model these guys execute, right? Um, with the affiliates and stuff like that. There's not enough warning for new traders, in my opinion, okay? So I don't necessarily take part in that. But it doesn't necessarily mean the people that do that are bad people, okay? Uh, they're doing something that is questionable, but it's not against the law in any way. And uh, most of the people I've talked to that have affiliate links, Crown being one of them, right? Uh, they're actually... Um, they're actually nice guys. They're really nice guys, and a lot of them are profitable traders, okay? Uh, it's just... Um, the money can sometimes, um, I don't want to say like blind, but <laughs> the money can sometimes change the, the scenario a little bit, right? Uh, so what, so when Kyle says, hey, 8k is a possibility, I respect that because he is often uh, quite biased towards the bullish side, okay? So, um, yeah, I mean, fantastic stuff there, big respect to that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a possibility that we can come down to 8K for sure. And we have talked about this in the past, right? Uh, where we can wick below this and, and finish up above 13K by the end of the week. And a wick below, big girthy death wick is not out of the question. We'll get to this in, in, in the later areas of the video. But uh, in summary for the short term here, basically, if we're looking for an upwards move, we're looking for a break of 19.4, okay? Uh, and then that measure move should play out to 20K. If we break even higher than that, and we do just bang it uh, above 21K, maintaining above 21K, right? Uh, then I'm looking for basically 24k from that point, well 23.5 I would say, right? Uh, towards the downside here, if we lose 18.7 significantly, okay, uh, then I'm looking for a move down here, but I'm not going to be trading a short down here to be to be clear. With that one, I wouldn't advise doing that either, right? Not financial advice in this channel, all of that stuff, right? But yeah, I, wouldn't, I would not say to, to, to take shorts in this area at all. Uh, and yeah, I mean leverage shorts, you can hold cash, it's not like problem <laughs> it's not for I'm, I'm in cash right but um yeah if we lose 17.5 big 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 measure move here down to 14.8 which i would expect to play out if the fud holds true okay so that's kind of my my uh, my analysis there and what i expect to happen in terms of this bad boy here in the mid term here we're going for the midterm predictions i would just say looking pretty bearish here lads and and lasses there are a few lasses right Apologies for assuming your genders there, guys and girls. <laughs> slippery slope here, slippery slope. But uh, we can see that we have a wedge here. Uh, we've broken this towards the downside. I wouldn't call this a retest, to be honest, guys. So it's a little bit less uh, prominent here towards the downside. But we are just dumping off a cliff as I'm talking. So, I mean, to play this measure move out towards the downside here uh, would bring us down to the 200 at exactly 18,000, which is interesting. Okay, guys, you know why that's interesting? You know why that's interesting? We're going to look at CMEs right here, okay? CME gap coming through uh, and coming at you is going to be below 18,000 here. You can see I've got an alert here. Um, between 18,000 and basically 17,000 or 16,9 would be the absolute bottom, right? But we can violate basically down to 17,8 and below, and I would call this gap filled, okay? Uh, so, yeah, looking for support around that area for sure. But uh, in terms of the midterm, we do have a measure move down to 18k. And remember, guys, uh, we can hit 18k and we still wouldn't have filled this gap, okay? So, uh, yeah, bounce on there again would not surprise me at all. Uh, and, yeah, it is lining up with the 200 EMA and SMA as well. So EMA being the, the, uh, the purple one and the SMA being the white boy there. So, yeah, we can see. We can see here potential for a bounce, potential for this measure move to play out towards the downside. And if it does... Um, that's good. I will be looking for a long, but um, it's important to gauge whether we do just break through this. So uh, some sideways around this area would be okay for a potential bounce afterwards, uh, but we've got to be watching this carefully, right? Because we're in a bigger long form sideways consolidation now, uh, and we can easily come down to these 16,000s. So we don't want to get trapped in a long at 18k if we come down to 16k, right? That would be awful, um, but we're going to be trading this reactively to say the least anyway, right? Before I continue here, guys, have a webinar every Wednesday, 
Okay, if you want to learn a strategy that basically helped me amass my wealth, then please join that webinar. It's completely free to attend. Go to my website, it's in the description. You can see it on your screen right now. It's going to open a new tab. You're going to type your email address in, and then you're going to get invited one hour before the webinar, and I'll give you a link uh, one hour before, and then you will be able to uh, join that and watch it completely for free, and I'll be teaching you all the lessons that you need to know from the basic fundamental foundations of a trader, right? That's... Uh, that that is a fact, <laughs> right? But that's the midterm. Uh, obviously, uh, this this wedge towards the upside doesn't matter anymore because we've now broken it down, and this would be confirmed as a breakdown for now. Okay, uh, but not to say that we can't be held up at this pretty crucial support zone that we're at right now. Okay, so yes, looking quite bearish, but um, on the on the wider scope here, we're looking we're just looking for that bigger pullback, and we're going to get to that now as we get to the longer term here. So the twelve hour right now, we can see here we're just we're having a little a little bit of a fondle of the price action channel, as you can see here, looking a bit flaccid now, Bitcoin. Right, we can see that we've been up in this uptrend for quite some time, but now. Uh, we are looking a bit flaccid. It's, it's not making all-time highs at the moment. We can obviously do that still, but again, coming down to that 17.8 area would be a good area for a nice little long. Look at the 55 here on the 12-hour. Pretty good, 17.8. That would be good, okay? And that's also, uh, that would fill our G CME gap if we get down there and test that, right? Um, and then essentially what I'm looking for here is to... to like bounce up a little bit, right? And and uh, basically take a trade from this 55 all the way back up to the 21 here, wherever that may be in the future, right? But uh, it's not going to be a blind trade here. We're going to be watching for the momentum on the high, the lower time frames as we talked about. If we start to lose this bad boy, which we've done in the past, and we, we could potentially do again here, 15K, as we talked about here, 15K being prominent. And we've got the 200 EMA here on a 15K, uh, which, I mean, I would expect to be tested pretty soon, okay? Um... So there's that for a potential drawdown here, but uh, drawdown, no, uh, pullback, big girthy megalodonithic pullbacks here. Uh, but if we do continue this trend up and we do basically bre break this trend line coming through, I would be expecting continuation uh, coming up here and making all time highs, right? Uh, I did talk about that, uh, the book maps uh, getting thinner right there. Wow, that's they just added a hell of a lot <laughs> since this video started. So we'll see, we'll see how this shapes up, but um, I'll keep you guys updated on Telegram for that. T.me slash Bitcoin Beats, where all the community hang out, right? So uh, moving forward to the 24 hour, similar scenario here where we haven't really tested the price action channel just yet. We tested it once along with the 21. If we lose this 21 here at, what do you know, 18.2, then uh, the price action channel coming in around 17.6 or 17.7, uh, around that 17.8 zone where we talked about potentially filling our CME gap before continuing upwards, right? So uh, having a little, little bit of a gander around this bad boy would be good for a nice bit of momentum towards the upside, looking to break out here, uh, potentially above 18.6 again, before uh, a nice sustained uptrend here coming forward, right? Obviously, if we go sideways in this area for a long time, around 17 to 18K, uh, then... I mean, it's going to be better because these moving averages here are going to come down over time and that's going to give us a better entry if we did want to wait for that break over the moving averages as well, right? Uh, but if it is happening quickly and if it is looking like momentum's turning around, then yeah, I'll be looking for a little scalpy scalp, uh, banging it all the way back up for a nice 6 to 10% here. Girthy gains coming through. That's the plan here. Moving to the three-day here, because this is important, important on the three-day here, looking a little bit more on the floppy side here. Multiple red candles, whereas before it was just a sea, a tidal wave, a tsunami. Tsunami of green. Girthy green candles towards the sky here. Multiple. I mean, not just one or two or five. Like, we're talking about ten plus, okay? So, uh, maybe ten plus. Was that ten plus? Yeah, ten plus there. So... Yes, the momentum is dwindling here. Uh, we do still have two and a half days left on this candle, so we can easily continue this trend up. But we've lost that initial trend line. We've come down, we've tested this one, uh, and now a potential to come down, test these kind of eight, 18,000 uh, will be an interesting one, right? Because if we lose this 18,000 zone, uh, the next support is at 16.1 for the three day at least. Uh, and we can also come down to 15K, which is exactly where the price action channel is as well, right? So you know what I like to say, guys, returning to the price action channel here uh, on every time frame is good for potential longs, especially on the higher time frames, as you can see, right? You could blindly train this uh, 
you could blindly trade this basically on a retest of the price action channel every time, uh, even in kind of sideways markets here after sustained uptrends, right? Uh, so you can see here we came up, we came back down to 10K here, and then eventually grinded back out of the price action channel and then started a, a serious uptrend there, right? So if we come down here again, I would be expecting basically another wave here, right? So basically another wave coming up off of the price action channel, even if we're down here for some time making a pattern, accumulating all of that good stuff. I am still bullish on Bitcoin. I do still expect another bounce up uh, and then with that basically even if we even if we go sideways here like this this is going to be perfect to trade okay this is going to be like m where the money is okay so um yeah don't be worried about this pullback um obviously be careful with your positions all of that good stuff but uh we're looking at some potential beautiful times ahead here for some some nice girthy trades here right talking about something like this right talking about something like this right uh, and um uh, what can we see here? After our uptrend here to 14k, we bounced, what do we know, on the price action channel for another girthy percentage here. And uh, if you guys were trading around this time, you will remember that these are big swings. These aren't small swings. It's 28% here from one side to the other, which is girthy, okay? Big old girth all over you here, right? Um, the same towards the downside you can do, obviously bouncing off the price action channel there, uh, important. Uh, and again, here, once we lost our 20k top, price action channel, price action channel, price action channel, right? Um, there are a few traps above as you can see, but I mean, this is Bitcoin. That's what you can expect, okay? The, the main point here is after a wave up, we come down to the price action channel and then once we start to get away from the price action channel again, and again, guys, momentum turning around on the lower time frames, that's when you can say, hey, Quite likely we go up here, quite likely we play out a bounce on the higher time frames. Let's bang it, let's get that percentage in. And that's essentially what we've been doing here pretty much all year. Um, but more on this kind of scale here. And this is what I'm going to get to next here. So that's the, the long-term predictions. I would just, oh, that's not right. Uh, the, the, I would just expect bounces off of the, wherever these moving averages land uh, and uh, taking longs off of that will be fine, I do think. Again, not financial advice. You're liable for your own trades. This is purely educational content, okay, guys? purely educational <laughs> so I, I don't know what happened there guys i don't, I don't even know but um maybe it's because i had two coffees this morning by accident maybe that's the case maybe it is maybe it isn't um but <laughs> in terms of this right 17k is our next blue box zone as you can see if we do pull back to there we're not surprised me if we get a bounce okay uh, and the next one besides that surprise surprise is at the lower 15,000 so potential to come down test 15k and a bounce off of that as well as the important moving averages that we've just been discussing about right so 15k prominent area if we do get a big crash right not crash but pullback uh, I would say a crash is maybe 50% plus or something like that right this is more uh, in Bitcoin anyway uh, other other assets is completely different but for Bitcoin Bitcoin, a crash is 50% plus, in my opinion. Um, so, everything else is kind of like a pullback or a dwindle of momentum. But, uh, yeah, if we do get a crash, it's going to be a lot more. Uh, and probably down to the 8K, as, as, as a good guy Kyle was was uh, was saying. But uh, more, more likely than not, I would just expect bounces on these bad boys and sideways between basically 15K and 20K for the next month. That's kind of my plan here coming forward. Uh, and that's how I plan to be trading this, right? Um, if we do bring it up here on this, you can see my strategy. I, I talked about this all of yesterday. I'm not going to go through it uh, too much here. Actually, we're just going to get rid of all the drawings. Just get rid of everything. Get, get, get rid of it right there, okay? Um, yeah, bull market barrier here which is an important one. Okay, we've been talking about this. Bull market barrier, 13.5K at the moment on a 12 hour. So potential here. Obviously you can see this momentum not as steep anymore. So this is actually slightly different to uh, to what we've seen in the past, in past cycles actually. If, if, we, are, if we are to look at this, right? Um, quite steep, this line here. I haven't stretched this or anything. You can see how steep this line is coming out of that cycle, right? Um, we, we curled over as we came sideways and crashed uh, the last time, right? As you can see there. So let me zoom in there. Uh, you can see bull market barrier curling over here after that first steep progression here, like we had this run, okay? And then sideways, as predicted uh, here, right? And um, well, not as predicted, I didn't predict this, but <laughs> sideways, as you'd expect, is probably the right word. And then a girthy crash through, uh, and then uh, finding that support on the top before continuing the uptrend. And that's kind of what I'm expecting this time around. Um, 
and we can see that that basically with that bull market barrier losing its steepness in the last time this happened, right? We've had a run up. Uh, some sideways around this area would make sense. So we're going to be looking to play whatever this range ends up being, okay? Whether it's a descending, whether it's ascending, uh, or whether it's just a big long form channel coming through, right? Whatever it may be, okay? What we're looking for here is consolidation. So sideways action, if you don't know what consolidation is, right? Sideways action. Then a girthy crash, okay, through through this bull market barrier, and I keep calling it the price action channel for no reason, uh, through the bull market barrier, as this thing curls over like it's already doing, okay, uh, and then we find support on it, we, uh, we, we close potentially a weekly here, uh, or even a 12 hour would be better, uh, with a big wick through, and then we've got a nice momentum here for the next kind of uh, run up as we basically go through, land on it, uh, do this, and then uh, just a sideways and up scenario here from that point. So essentially what we're looking for here is banging it down, lower time frames turning around at this bottom area, potentially 12,000 um, as a max bottom here if I was to just to draw this like in a probable way, okay? Um, this is actually quite probable. Um, if you include like that, right, <laughs> and then and then the dub, but um, yeah, sideways uh, from from when we basically hold this, and once it's confirmed, and then continuation up for a, a much much bigger uptrend, right? That's quite, kind of what I see happening here, and I I do believe that this run is essentially to get the dumb institutions in so like the crypto funds, all of these people that think they know how to trade and know how to be market makers. And then, and then these people with like 30, 40 years experience will come in uh, with the run they've already created here with their unlimited money. And as all these institutions are buying with being like 20K is going to be fine. You can still 100X from here. This is all over the news, all over the news. And it's not a coincidence, right? So um, 20X here you can get is fine. Bitcoin's going to 200K, whatever, like whatever, right? All of that, all of that good stuff. Um, and obviously that's not 20X, guys. I'm aware of that. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, the, the point here being that with such a steep rise up here, the dumb institutions will be getting in here. And then if we do get that big dump here, uh, it's the same game here in every market here. When everyone goes along, they will dump it, right? And these are the people that do that, right? These aren't just random funds. These are people that do this in every market in the world. And now they're in Bitcoin, okay? So what can you expect to happen? Everyone, the big money goes long here. The big dumb money goes long here, right? Uh, us, the small smart money, <laughs> right? We... We are going to wait to see where this crash happens. And then once all these big dumb monies start to go short again and get shaken out by this whatever crash happens, right? And this will be in every market, considering we've gone up all year in every market, right? Um, everyone piles out and then they buy up with, with all the money they've accumulated from the dump, right? Uh, and then what we're going to be doing is essentially playing it on their side and waiting for that huge crash and then banging it towards the upside for the seriously girthy, big, beefy, Chicken McNugget gangs all over you here on a Monday. On a Monday. I don't know. I was going to say the day of God, but this Monday is not a day of God. So what can you do? But that's the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one webinar tomorrow, as I said. And uh, I will see you for, for another update tomorrow. OK, um, and those of you that have signed up for the webinar. Thank you so much. All good. I want to give a shout out to these girthy thick boys coming through. Thank you for the support. Thank you for buying me a coffee slash beer. Not needed. No return on that investment, but massively appreciated here. So congrats. Thank you. Uh, big old mega girthy thick boy, Mr. Fish there as well, um, who's been around for a month now and also has an emblem in the comments. So I'll see you in the next video. Peace out and goodbye from Bitcoin Beats.